In its day, the original Colt Model 1903 had laid the groundwork for a superb military pistol. Its only real shortcoming was the 32 caliber bullet it fired. It was simply too small for combat. The answer was another Browning Colt collaboration. Its 45 caliber bullet was nearly half an inch in diameter. This was the Model 1911, better known as the Colt 45 automatic. This is an extremely powerful gun. This gun is capable of stopping a 200 pound man in his tracks when he is full of adrenaline and ready to attack you and running towards you if you hit him any place other than his hand, if you hit him in the shoulder, if you hit him in the leg, if you hit him in any part of the body, he will most likely stop. This gun has what is known as stopping power. Inside the Colt 45, a swinging link lowers the barrel after each shot. This allows the spent case to eject and the next cartridge to come up out of the spring-loaded magazine. Most modern automatic pistols still rely on the same design. Adopted by the United States military in 1911, the Colt 45 was the sidearm of American forces through World War I, World War II, and beyond. Soldiers were trained in proper firing positions for the big gun and learned how to control its strong recoil. Demonstrations even proved that compared to the Army's M1 carbine, the Colt 45 was more powerful. During World War II, demand for the Model 1911 was so high that companies like Singer and Remington Rand, that normally made sewing machines and typewriters, manufactured the pistol as part of the war effort. The U.S. Army was so satisfied with the performance of the Model 1911 that it continued to be the soldier's sidearm in Korea, Vietnam, and was not retired until a few years before Operation Desert Storm. The key to the 1911 Colt's longevity was utter reliability, uh, simplicity, strength, and combat effectiveness. It rarely went wrong. You could drop it, you could throw it, you could dip it in a bucket of water, you could throw it in the sand, cover it with mud, wipe it with your hand, still work. On the home front, it was the weapon of choice on both sides of the law. FBI agents carried the Colt 45 in the 1920s and 30s. Public enemy number one, John Dillinger, after being shot by FBI agents in a gun battle, died with a model 1911 in his hand in Chicago in 1934. Some 90 years after it was introduced, the model 1911 is still in production at the Colt factory. And every one manufactured here is still held to the standard of the original Browning design. This is um, John Browning's original prototype for the 1911-45 service pistol. Um, only one of two of them ever made, and we have this one here at the factory. We here at Colt hold this gun in very, very high regard. It's left in the original in the white. It was never finished. It was a functioning model, and uh, Mr. Browning and other people at Colt actually shot this gun with the military. The Colt 45 remains a favorite among the shooting public and still sees action with law enforcement in the hands of the Texas Rangers. This is the Texas Ranger 175th commemorative gun. What we have here is, is a highly refined 1911 John Browning design. It has a refined trigger system, um, low mounted sights for their, their specification, and other internal tolerances that were geared towards heavy use that might be experienced by a man in that position. The 1911 was a model of power and reliability, but lawmen and soldiers who carried it for a living also came to know its one drawback. It was heavy, two and a half pounds unloaded, 